<laughs> All right. So I've been working on my circuit, and we look back to Tesla's schematics, and he talks about this circuit. Here we have a charge capacitor with a brake going directly into the primary. And this is a lot like a regular pulsing circuit with um, a MOSFET here and a charge capacitor or battery. Um, this here is basically to get high voltage into the capacitor. So we can just look at this as a battery, essentially. So we have a battery, brake device, and our circuit, our coil. And uh, he says that this is a disadvantage. The oscillations are quickly damped and uh, there's large current going through the brake device, which is my MOSFET, so it doesn't work very well, which is true. So then he goes on to say that you should have the brake here instead and have these capacitors to prolong the oscillations. Um, and this is his final one, where he says that uh, you basically balance some, um, this capacitor takes up all the energy of the uh, transformer, so this capacitor will take up all the energy of a coil that's pulsed. So this is our pulse of the coil. And then uh, it's like a resonant, um, this is like a buck converter right here. If we pulse this coil um, with the brake, we're gonna get a charge into here as this collapses, right? So the idea is to get this coil and this capacitor in resonance so that the reactances are equal. And when that happens with this inductance uh, added, Basically, current's going to go through this system uh, really easily. Now, if the frequency of this system is the same frequency of this coil, then we get resonance here and here. So uh, he added this to balance this capacitor a little bit more. And um, so this is the circuit I came up with: is we have a battery, and we pulse a bifiler coil. If we don't have a bifiler coil, uh, it's going to be a lot harder to tune. So we pulse this coil with the oscillator and uh, then the energy that uh, the momentum that's stored in the magnetic field will go into this capacitor and uh, we get current flowing in here. Now the goal is to have this and that, these two reactances, the capacitor and the inductor, um, at resonance at the resonance of this. So originally I used uh, this type of inductor, which is not by filer, and it, uh, it was really hard to tune because you have to tune with the capacitance and then change the frequency. Um, so I made this coil a long time ago to study um, how the rotation of the windings changes the magnetic field. And this is a by filer coil. It's wound on a ferrite, and uh, this works exceptionally well. So. Um, so it's cool because now at residence, we're only pulsing this bifiler coil and all the energy, the, the high frequency radiant, is uh, it's actually being given a path to travel now that's not wasting energy. Uh, before I had this as my primary and then you know we drain energy to ground. So now we're draining the energy through my coil to ground. So it's way more efficient. Um, I never pull over a whole amp now because uh, this coil has a pretty high resistance because it's small wire, but it's got a high inductance. So it's got a nice back EMF spike and then I got mica capacitors as uh, this capacitor here. So <clears throat> at resonance, it works really well and um, yeah, we can play with the, the frequencies, but it's really sharp tuning. Um, I've also found that uh, these coils, if you calculate the Q factor of them, uh, the Q factor is in the hundreds. Most coils have a Q factor of like 30, like tops. So uh, these coils are actually extremely resonant and um, they work great. But this by filer is. Uh, this is a way better way to run the circuit. Um, the amp draw is a lot less, and we still pretty much have the same output of the coil, uh, which can set other coils in resonance, but now we have a different type of DC driving circuit where the radiant 
doesn't really come back into the circuit as much and it doesn't screw up my driving frequency as it was before. So uh, yeah, that's my new circuit and uh, it works like a charm. Thanks for watching.